eh, per il primo appuntamento del public program dedicato alla mostra di James Lee Byers, che spero tutti voi o quasi tutti abbiano visto. Io sono Giovanna Madasi e sono la responsabile del public program e ho il piacere e l'onore di avere con noi Stefan Köhler, eh, curatore e eh, stretto collaboratore di James Lee Byers negli ultimi dieci anni della sua vita, che eh, ringrazio veramente di cuore perché si è dedicato in questi ultimi mesi a una ricerca incredibile di documenti, di fotografie, di diari, di ricordi e ha ricostruito per noi un racconto in prima persona eh, della sua visione non solo curatoriale ma anche umana e di questa incredibile avventura che era eh, vivere e lavorare accanto a James Lee Byers. Uh, non, non vi dico altro, insomma, ovviamente il suo intervento si focalizzerà sugli ultimi dieci anni della, della vita di questo grandissimo artista, in particolare su un momento, diciamo, giapponese particolarmente importante, ma non solo, e per noi è fondamentale, ci saranno altri momenti del public program, perché questa mostra, con questi incredibili lavori, um, rivista alla luce delle cose che adesso Stefan ci racconta, che sono questi aspetti effimeri del lavoro di James Lee Byers e della sua vita, che era mh, una continua performance, insomma, ogni gesto, ogni lettera, ogni eh, eh, racconto eh, era una parte importante del suo lavoro. Quindi io ringrazio ancora tantissimo Stefan Köhler e ringrazio voi e spero che questo eh, primo incontro ci aiuti ad apprezzare ancora di più l'enorme stratificazione di, di, di significati dell'opera di James Lee Byers. Alla fine, proprio per richiesta di Stefan Köhler, ci sarà un momento di domande di voi a lui, ma forse anche di, di lui al pubblico. Grazie mille. Sì, ecco, io ho fatto questa introduzione in italiano perché Stefan Koller sta benissimo l'italiano, però il talk sarà in inglese, è una lingua con cui lui si sente più a suo agio, però poi le domande e lo scambio finale potrà essere fatto anche in, in inglese, in italiano, scusate. Grazie mille, grazie. Grazie, grazie Gianna, grazie, buonasera. Grazie, buonasera. Thank you for being here and thank you for Hanga Bikoka and the team to invite me to give this talk because it gave me an opportunity to dive into my archives, to do research and contact different institutions where James Lee Byers had exhibitions and where I was asked to assist him. So it has been a little bit archaeology. And uh, I will, uh, I found texts which I wrote in the um, 80s and 90s. So I will switch back and forth from texts that I wrote at that time when, um, when I met James Lee Byers and uh, quoted him a lot. So there's a lot of sayings and expressions that Byers used. So I, I will read to you these, some of these texts and show you slides from different uh, phases of encounters. So the idea, and I hope that this uh, presentation of describing my encounters and also the way he acted and said and insisted on the conditions, the way his work is exhibited, helps you to understand his work in different dimensions. So that's the, uh, the purpose and the hope of my talk. So I will sit down and look at my papers. So I call it the perfect moment because that's the essence of what I feel about bias of being here now together, concentrating not being with your head somewhere else and celebrating the moment and also questions, asking questions and not being happy with easy answers but continue of looking questions. That's why I call this uh, talk Hunting for Questions with James Lee Byers. So, um, so uh, and I read now from my diary. For months on my way to work at the Peggy Guggenheim collection, I lived in Venice and I had a student internship at the Guggenheim in 85-86. I observed a tall man dressed in a black velvet suit with a black hat and his eyes covered with a scarf of black silk crossing the Gran Canale in a ferry boat. 
a traghetto, a black gondola. He never sat down, but always stood in the middle of the shaky boat like a sculpture. He was conscious of every move he made, aware of every detail of his posture, as well as the energy he emanated into the surrounding space. Finally, by introduction of a Venetian art critic, Giulia Alessandri, I had the chance to meet James Lee Byers, whose silent presence had been in my life for quite some time already. Stealing diamonds, I love the title of your exhibition, James Lee said. When my pals and I explained the scheme to him, we had plotted to get the old shipyards on the Judeca Islands during the period of the 1986 biennial to show a group of 20 young artists and a couple of rather known ones. As you see on the list, you have uh, Gino De Domenici's, you have uh, Enzo Cucchi, uh, Eva Löfdal, and uh, Salvo, James Lee Byers. His enthusiasm gave us courage to realize with few means our vision without making compromises. At, at my first lunch with him and his wife Wendy in one of the restaurants of the Zutter embankment, he threw deep red rubies into everyone's wine glass. Uh, the little precious seeds tran transformed the common wine into a poem. Constantly while eating and talking, James made spheres of the rolls soft inside with great dexterity and precision. At the end of the meal, he gave those gray balls to each of us as a self-portrait. Hard as stone, I saw them later on curators' desks, on bookshelves in collectors' homes and many other places. Initially, I was just as much scared as awe-inspired by his presence and radical demand for 100% attention and sharp, intelligent answers all the time. Often he would say short poems during our encounters, such as, the old frog jumps into the old pond, splash, or it is so silent that even the chirping of the cicada sinks into the stone, and mention that there were Japanese haiku of a nomad poet called Basho, whom he truly admired for his succinctness and depth. Even though I had read haikus before, it was James D. Byers who made me understand the essence of this condensed communication which can penetrate the heart of the listener like an arrow because of its fine tip and then unfold like a flower in your heart. Uh, James Lee Byers' contribution to Stealing Diamonds on Judeca was not brought by an, any art transport company to our venue. Starting in front of the Biennale, Park Giardini, James Lee in a golden suit with a golden with a black hat stood in a gondola pointing a six meter long gold leafed needle to the sky and slowly let himself be rowed across the widest part of the Venice Laguna to Judeca. By creating a floating sculpture, he turned the arrival of the work into a celebrative act which he called the poet of the gondola. In our venue, the needle was laid horizontally on a pedestal made by a Venetian furniture artisan on the center wall in about 10 meters height. Carefully, he supervised the position of his work, not giving in until it was perfectly symmetrical with the center axis of the space. In the middle, dead center, he repeated his instructions, sometimes bursting with impatience. That moment, for the first time, I learned about the importance of the precise positioning of his pieces, the integrity of which he would sometimes defend with all his force and variety of tempers. In seconds, I realized that this artist would never compromise. I had met a man who, at first glance, seemed to be an artist with idiosyncrasies, but in reality defended universal laws of nature, for which destiny had chosen him to be an ambassador. Mm -hmm. 
also I was witness of several performances of James Lee Byers that he did spontaneously. This is one evening after dinner. He said, let's, we have come now, we have a performance at Punta de la Dugana with Wendy standing at the point and I don't remember the words they said or the name of the performance, but they were standing at the Punta de la Dugana, looking at the moon. The image is unfortunately a little bit fuzzy, but I'm glad I still found it and had it. And then they spread out a red piece of silk. On the right side is Wendy Dunaway, James Lee Byers' wife. So having a notion that James Lee Bias, in spite of his sharply spoken instructions, did not stipulate difficult tasks to make himself important and send people sadistically around, but to stand up against arbitrariness, mediocre solutions and lack of awareness, let me say yes when he asked me for my company after leaving Venice in autumn 86. We went to Düsseldorf where he was invited to have the in entire Kunsthalle and install the Philosophical pa Palace. That's the invitation card for the opening. The walls of the, the, walls of the Kunsthalle Düsseldorf were not of the color James needed for his exhibition. He demanded scarlet, shun in Japanese, one of his favorite colors on all walls. Exceeding the provided budget, James Lee had to use most of his honorary to have the walls painted thoroughly red. Without his lips moving, I heard him constantly say, sacrifice to attain perfection, suffer to attain poetry, slow down to discover beauty. And he just repeated it like a mantra while working. But also, yeah, the windows had layers of tear marks of rain. James Lee demanded they would be all cleaned to return that transparency. They were cleaned. The space under the major staircase of the Kunsthalle had become a junkyard for things out of favor. James asked them to be removed. They were removed. Every motion he made was a defense and integrity to create an undisturbed access to beauty, magic, space, poetry, and perfection. During our heavy German, oh, then I have to insert, also he was had this cruel aspect. He, he made the director of the Kunsthalle Düsseldorf quite a bit suffer. For example, he, they had forgotten to order a lotus flyer, flower for his room, the sacrifice of the flower, and it had to be flown in from India on Lufthansa, must have cost a fortune for the Kunsthalle. And uh, he said, um, this exhibition has to be perfect, even if the director will cry tears of blood. So, <laughs> so during heavy German lunches, James told me about the miraculous disappearing and killing acts performed by Japanese ninja in total silence without having leaving traces. Oh, these are some works. Oh, let me go back to this one. Actually, you see this work in the exhibition in gold leafed. It was gold leafed only a couple of months before his exhibition at the Castello Rivoli. Uh, maybe Giovanna remember the date, but it was shortly after this one. Yeah, and but it was still white marble from Kavala in Greece. And my one of the tasks that James Libyas gave me, he gave me a soft eraser gum and he said, you stand there and you clean these figures under the spotless. So I spent hours before the opening cleaning these, this, the, the door of innocent and figure of for the question is in the room. So I know them intimately, very intimately, because I touched them for two days cleaning, 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 cleaning. But now they're gold leafed and so it's a totally different appearance back to ninja so he told me about the killing acts of ninjas and disappearing he hoped that by listening to his accounts i would be able to behave like a true ninja even though i did not learn to climb walls or breathe on a reed while hiding in a moat i got a clear insight into what he meant by being invisible at the same time 
efficiently carry out functions. If one's attitude about oneself and one's relationship to the physical environment was pure and not dominant, one could attain a state of not being present, not being noticed. The third day after our arrival, we spent hours in a martial arts shop in an Asian neighborhood of Düsseldorf. With great pleasure, James explained all the vicious looking accessories like flying stars and hooks and etc. Finally, he bought a ninja suit, which I was to wear from now on when appearing with him in public. So there we are. I look like a black rabbit. <laughs> While quality checking thousands of five by five millimeters books, black paper books with golden miniature printing saying, beauty goes, you turn it over, avant-garde, I thought of James White amplitude of creation from the most invisible to the gigantic, from the silent to the noisy, from extreme material presence to the incomprehensible pure idea all united by his poetry and aspiration to achieve perfection. Make people love beauty and grasp the essence of the moment, sustaining attention by crescendo, decrescendo, piano and fortissimo. So the ninja stories were only the hors d'oeuvre to countless tales of James Day in Japan from 1958 to 1969. He did not reside in this country to find his fortune or other precalculated reasons, but to live with and recontextualize aspects of Japanese poetic and sensual spirituality. Through his performances, sculptures, poems, and object constellations, he both managed to remind the Japanese of their treasures and bring the heartbeat of the soul of Japan to the West. Having a generator of introduction by Yanagi Soetsu, Many doors meant for, for few people sprang open for James and allowed him deep insights for his research and prolific creation of works. Of course, I don't need, I don't think that bias imitated aesthetic aspects of Japanese culture. To the contrary, he picked up on the universal truth of phenomena, which could only appear in Japan and distilled their essence. So we are, let me just go quickly back. One other task I had at the Düsseldorf exhibition was that James Lee Byers uh, was not happy that the square in front of the Düsseldorf Kunsthalle was called Grabeplatz. He said, we are in Düsseldorf, this place, this square must be called Boysplatz. So he went every day, even after the opening of the exhibition, stayed another 10 days, went every day up to the roof of the Kunsthalle with a megaphone, for one hour saying boys platz, boys platz, boys platz. And Jürgen Harten, you don't see it on this photo, but the director was so afraid that he would get dizzy and fall off the Kunsthalle. So my task to tie him every day with a rope around his belly and tie the rope to a chimney, which is, has not the same form as it had before. So, and that's also just a short that's why I put these slides in because they they had they were friends they met once in a while they sometimes did projects together and uh, this is a very famous photo by Benjamin Katz of buyers uh, buyers and boys together and then when when buyers gave me this uh, he wrote the letters J J Joseph Boys on the cheek of Joseph Boys and we come back to his writing later. A few months after we finished the Düsseldorf exhibition, I found myself with James Lee Byers in Berkeley, working on an exhibition at the University Art Museum. More than Düsseldorf, San Francisco, San Francisco offered plenty of examples to illustrate the tales of James' life in Japan. I felt almost brainwashed and was convinced that Japan was nothing than a bag of secrets, miracles, examples of the most subtle appreciation of nature and beauty, the highest level of craftsmanship and care for perfection. And last but not least, host of the most enlightened form of succinct poetry and coins, like the, the frog who jumps into the old pond or the cicaga sound that goes into the rocks. Naturally, after James, 
had returned to Europe, I bought a ticket to Japan, wore my ninja suit during the flight, of course, and was ready to verify what my friend had talked about for months. Often I had to scratch and dig deep. These are the first letters he wrote, wrote to me in Japan. Often I had to scratch and dig deep to find what had nurtured James Lee, because Japan had changed a little between 1969 and 87, a little. Yet with the help of precious guides, I, find, I found what uh, James had talked about. Similar to my friend, I never felt finished. There was always another level of subtlety to be initiated to. Shinto rituals, conversations with Buddhist monks, projects with artisans. So I continuously extended my stay and stayed and stayed. Once, when I saw James Lee once in a while in Europe, he pressed me out like a lemon to receive fresh juice from Japan. From his curiosity about what I was doing, I realized how much he loved and missed the country. The Subarashi Tokoro, that means in Japanese, a wonderful, special place. So he also, as we can go back, he sent, he sent me instructions for books to make from silk paper on the right side, for example. And we met also in once in a while in different places. So there was a continuous exchange and he had always wishes to, to, to produce and continue producing uh, projects in, in Japan. So I just show some of the works that I, inspired by James Lee Byers and his Cohen's that he brainwashed me with. When living in Japan the first months before working for the Toyota Museum, I lived in a Zen temple and I had these ideas to visualize Cohen's and a bridge for ants, balancing an egg on my head, seven swans on a lotus lake. A performance that I did in uh, called um, Swan Lake with 12 white umbrellas, one black umbrella, and two shakuhachi players hidden in the forest playing Swan Lake. So these are projects I did and also... Then I visited James Lee Byers, um in New York and uh, had the pleasure to go with him. You, you see him in many performances and photos in golden suits. So this is the place where the golden suits were made. This is his um, Chinese tailor in Chinatown, New York, Mr. North South. So he, that's where he ordered all his dresses for his performances and so I went with him one time to to place an order. Let me just see. And then, um, before I come to his last visit in Japan, 96, 97, uh, I went, James Lee Byers well, was sick of cancer. He claims when he was doing research in CERN in Switzerland, trying to talk with the scientists in the cyclotron, in the, how do you call it, where you speed up electrons and neutrons. He's been, hmm? Cyclotron. <laughs> He's been there frequently collecting questions. So he asked, liked to ask scientists big brains for the most important questions. And he said being there a lot, he, felt sick and he was attained with cancer, a very rare kind of cancer in his stomach. And he was ill and in hospital in Santa Fe. And uh, Julie Kevenik, who took also hit, had several exhibitions with James Lee Byers, was a, a very good friend. We decided one day to fly to Santa Fe and check how James is and make him feel comfortable. And we rented three rooms in this uh, famous La Fonda Hotel and made a, brought lots of things that buyers would like, like flowers and silk paper from Japan and good champagne and wine and took rides out to Taos Pueblo 
a wonderful place and I'm so glad we had this week together with him in Santa Fe, making him feel comfortable and taking care. Yeah. So now I'm coming soon to the last visit of James um, in Japan. In late autumn 96, James Lee was invited for a preparatory meeting to an, that would lead to an exhibition in an institution near Tokyo. It's the Toyama Foundation in Kawagoe. On that occasion, so I will now switch to my diary, which I found just last week, actually, of the time of, um, of the last months with James Lee in Japan. So, November 26, 1996. So, he was in the, with this foundation near Tokyo, and the talks, the prepare, he, he, they, the, the people taking care of the exhibition, the curators didn't understand at all what he wanted, and he got angry at them. And he locked himself up in the hotel room and wouldn't want to talk to anyone anymore. So, but they knew that I was good friends with him, and I was near Nagoya, near the Toyota Museum. I worked with the Toyota Museum as a curator at large already. So they didn't know how to handle James Lee anymore. So they got a driver and drove, had him driven to, to, to meet me and Mr. Oki at the Toyota Museum. Because they didn't know what to do. So James arrived in Toyota at dusk by car driven from Kawagoe, that's this foundation, by Mr. Hirano, a very tired member of the Committee for the Realization of the James Lee Byers exhibition in Kawagoe, as it was proudly printed on his name card. It was, it was very hard for James to get out of the very low car. He was surrounded by packs of sembe, that's this rice crackers and other snacks. Hirano said, we had to stop quite often to buy food. Every time it took ages to look at all the little trinklets and find in the souvenir shops of the gas stations and get back into the car. Very tight, he said, I will go back to Tokyo tonight. Please enjoy his company. And he left. Mr. Hirano left, left, left very quickly after moving James' belongings into my car. In the museum, See, you see, we were prepared. <laughs> In the museum, we had already prepared since early afternoon, since we got the call. Various curators express shopping and putting on ninja suits, which Aoki-san had rented, actually. Since they were quite authentic, it took quite a while to put on all the various parts. A work quite similar to setting the sails of a yacht. I wore the old suit which James had given to me in Düsseldorf. The black had already faded and the cotton had lost its, its original strength by frequent washing. Yet I had kept it because it was full of stories. James was quite charmed by the presence of the ninja. No, new museum staff had ever greeted him like this. We were hiding alternatively behind columns and jumped out of elevators to surprise him. Even though he was very pleased, he also was very critical of the museum installation, especially of the maintenance of the wall paint's perfection. In front of a mauve color wall near the cashier, we spent almost a half an hour. First James admired the color and the texture, then he saw more and more scratches and losses and spots. This wall could be so perfect, but look at all the floors. Drive me to the center. Center, I said. Can't you hear, Stefan? Very impatiently, he directed me back and forth on the wheelchair. I had a hard time to make the simple wheelchair move where he wanted. Almost having disappeared in the elevator, he wanted to be back out once more to look at the black wall in the lobby. Actually, this black wall is much too glossy and irregularly painted. Move me to the center, back, all the way back. See, the spots are not symmetrically arranged and make quite an unpleasant ple pattern on the black surface. How many are you? Let, actually, how many ninjas are you? Aoki-san and I gave our best to be patient. 
I had no experience so far in moving ill people in wheelchairs around without causing shockwaves when crossing thresholds. James was a great teacher in showing people how to take care of someone who has a lot uh, of pain inside a stomach infested by cancer. So let me see where we, okay, we can show this all. How does it work? Okay. So this is we, virtual reality. This is James Let's talking. Go glass Wait, go. What asshole? Three flunky boys. Never. Obviously it has not Never. worked very well. And I think it's ridiculous, you know? Three golden spheres. Sure. And send it your sphere to me. I oh, mean, it's me. just lugubrious, you know? Lugubrious. Bullshit. Go, go, go. I don't have fucking go, 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 go like that. Go, perfect square. Lugubrious. Old Greek man, about 80 years old. The largest amount of gold. Old Greek man, about 80 years old. The largest amount of gold. He was fine. I was just big gold. I like a big broad gold. The middle, the middle, death center, the middle, fire center, drunk, fire here and drunk for 20 years and minutes. He suddenly died. He suddenly died. He suddenly died. He suddenly died. Fire, fire. We had come here all hunger because our staff would have to wear ninja suits. The big one? So, Okay, but not for the old. Yeah, Sensei is there. Oh, and the big street there. Mr. Sensei is a beautiful wall. Yes, but not three minutes. Eight minutes. Nine minutes. Ten minutes. Eleven minutes. Twelve minutes. Thirteen minutes. Fourteen minutes. 15 minutes, 16 minutes, 17 minutes, 18 minutes, 19 minutes, 20 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 minutes, just within that short time, he transformed the room thoroughly with a variety of objects he had found during his short stay in, in Japan. There was a carved raman board with two butterflies, two wooden poles covered with cherry bark, a ball covered with tiny dried pink roses, dozens of sheets of wrinkled paper. The first dinner we had in the Japanese restaurant, which was flooded with cold neon light and the wait and waitresses who wanted to go home as soon as possible. We asked the rigid woman to turn it down. However, our request was denied for technical reasons. November 27th, I spent a slow morning with James in his completely transformed room, spending a lot of time talking in, his, in the space about the exhibition in Kawagoe, which didn't work out, and the possibility of my picking up why Hiroshima investigation. So Bias had this fantasy, I think, but he was closely, he said, connected to the CIA. He would like to get me in touch with the head of the CIA to investigate why the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. So he asked me almost every day, whether he could give my contact to the CIA or whether I wanted to get in touch with them or they could get in touch with me. And I said, mm, mm, maybe not a good idea. <laughs> no, thank you.
But he talked a lot about his past, how he went to art school and was discriminated because of his unusual ideas. He, they called me Jimmy the nigger, actually, he said. His first commission work he got from a Greek ice cream producer, he said, who wanted a sculpture in his garden. I made a mountain of white sand, which was greatly estimated by the owner in the beginning, but then a week of never-ending rain hit the area, and the monument dis was dispersed all over the garden. He still liked me and decided to give me a scholarship to go to Japan for about one year. Did I ever tell you how I spent my first month's allowance in one evening, he asked me. I had just come to Tokyo, not knowing many people, trotting along the little lanes late in the evening. I found a cute looking little tea, tea house and was greeted extremely friendly. The lady took off my shoes, my coat, and then asked whether I would like to have a bath before dinner. It sounded all so great, and I could not resist. They gave me great food, wonderful sake. I dozed a little and was ready to leave at dawn. When I asked for the bill, it was about the month, about the amount which I had to live on for the next couple of weeks. But I had a great introduction by Yanagi Setsuro, who was respected all over Japan in the arts and crafts movement. With his name card in my hand, I was received with a lot of care and given access to every delicate situation. And then he asked, do you know the Brain Research Center in Berkeley, the Institute for Artificial Intelligence, Soft Intelligence? Herbert Kahn was the head of the Hudson Institute, the future research center of the US. And he was, he hired me as blip messenger for the CIA. So that's another story that is maybe true, maybe not. He said sometimes he was offered free tickets to go to Paris to have lunch with someone and then fly back. And so he said, what, I said, what is that about? Flying to Paris for a day or two, having lunch with someone who would be interested to pay your ticket? He said it was very easy. The CIA used me as a blip. They recorded when I just talked and the frequency that in my speech appeared the words beauty, perfection, death, was the new code for decrypting the new CIA code. So he said he got the free tickets as a blip. And I said, well, if there you get free tickets, I was almost tempted to uh, give my phone number to the CIA, but I didn't. So maybe you can see, he was also talking about making an exhibition Toyota Museum, that's wonderful. We went to the Minge Khan. So there is a sculpture, a Buddhist monk in the 6th, 17th century called Enku in Japan, who made amazingly abstract sculptures. He was a pilgrim and he walked 30 kilometers every day. And wherever he stayed, he was hosted and could sleep and eat. He carved enku, uh, he carved Buddhist sculptures, small ones, big ones. And so you can see his itinerary by finding the enkus all over in temples in Japan, even going up to Hokkaido. So he was very intrigued. Can you see the, can we show the next one? Maybe there's more. Yeah, and so he was very intrigued by this enku and wanted to exhibitions with the enku. And that was in the in this Enku museum. They had a guest book, and he was signing it and writing and writing and writing. So and so that's something very important, which I mentioned later. As you saw also on the letters that he sent me the stars and he puts the stars he said that i will also quote him later that he doesn't like the western typog typography he thinks it's it's very ugly and he says adding the stars gives a different flow 
to Western writing. It just keeps, makes the edges in the corners soft. So that's why he doesn't, uh, he always adds the stars. So let, let's see at the next film. So um, I was asked to um, drive buyers to uh, meet the organizers of the exhibition, the ho his host in Kyoto, because he was supposed to fly back in a couple of days. So the idea was that he would, uh, after his two, three days in, in Toyota, that he would go to Kyoto, stay in Kyoto two days, and then leave. And uh, at the end of this visit to the Mingekan with the Engo and signing the book, then um, I drove him over to uh, Kyoto, and suddenly he saw a sign on the road, Ise Shrine. Ise Shrine is the holiest Shinto shrine in Japan. It's rebuilt every 20 years. It has a sacred grove with a holy river and holy fish. And he saw the sign and he said, um, I don't want to go to Kyoto anymore. Uh, can't we go to Ise instead? And I said, well, let's stop. Let's stop. Uh, we can't just change our plans because we have to call them. Also, if we change our plans, I would like to make some phone calls and make sure that we have a hotel room. So we stopped at, a, at one of these highway stops. And so while he was shopping for more little things to fill the car, uh, I made some calls. And yeah, here it is. I have no desire to, to go to Kyoto. Call them and tell them that I'm not coming. I think you're right, James, but if you want to go to Ise, let me make some phone calls to make sure we have a hotel room. After that, I'll call them at the Gion Hotel and let them know that they have, we have changed our plans. I spent 15 minutes in a freezing cold telephone booth while wind wiped, whipped showers of slush and snow on the windows. About five hotels were fully booked. Finally, I found two rooms. The International Ise Hotel was the grand name. Then knowing that I would cause a surprise, I called Mr. Hirano, who was the, 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 the coordinator of the exhibition Kawagoa, and said, and after I said that Mr. Byers had chosen not to come to Kyoto tonight, a foam of anger and frustration began to ooze from the earpiece of the receiver. Then they, let's meet tomorrow in Nara. We have reserved a suite room in the in the Imperial Nara Hotel for Mr. Byers tomorrow night. Good night, and ended Hiranosan the conversation abruptly. Shivering, I rushed back to the souvenir shop to tell James Lee the good news. He was pleased about my research and my decidedness and handed me a plastic tray which he had loaded with selection of things he wanted or rather needed. Try these golden glasses on. You look great. You should wear those only. We will take two of those. Everything James had chosen came in pairs. Two golden miniature swords as a key holder. Two little rings made of tiny faked pearls. All other ob objects which had any kind of spheres made of brass on them attracted him magically. Would you mind paying? I have no cash on me. Tomorrow in Kyoto, I will get some money on my credit card and pay you back. The bill for the toys and the, the cookies was about 15,000 yen. I'm hungry. Let's have some soba over there. In same, the same ugly building, we moved slowly past the drink vending machine ma machines towards the stainless steel counter with our plastic bags full of treasures. I bought tickets from the machine for Ebi Fry Soba. That Ebi is shrimp and it has like a batter, it's like tempura and you know soba. As, I, as soon as I put the steaming bowls on the table, 
James started to peel the deep fried batter off the shrimp and soaked any remaining traces of oil off the white uh, shrimp meat. All this oil is too heavy for my stomach. I cannot bear it. But this soba is fantastic. It is by far one of the best I ever had in Japan. Would, would you please order a couple more of those shrimp? I convinced the cooks to sell us deep fried shrimps without noodles, even though there was no category for it on the vending machine. They were charmed with the old man wearing a bright red hat, circular gold rimmed glasses and a black leather coat who chanted a mix between oishi desne, so delicious, and grunting with pain as his stomach winded when they were receiving the food. So there's a lot to count. But anyhow, so we spent the night in Ise. The next morning, as you saw on the video before, I was pushing him on the wheelchair through the pebbles of the Ise shrine so he could see the shrine and the fish and was very happy. So um, he actually, um, be, he was very happy and then the next day he said he wants to Kyoto. So he tricked them again. So he didn't go to Nara Hotel, they were waiting for him in vain. So we took hotel in the Miyako Hotel. And so to, to wrap it up a little bit, James Lee was um, supposed to leave. They left me alone with him and said, um, you bring him to Itami, Osaka airport tomorrow morning at six. He has a flight at eight o'clock to go to Tokyo. And from there we have Lufthansa first class to bring him back to Frankfurt. So I was with him alone in the hotel and I, I woke him up at six and he had not packed a lot actually. I started to help him packing. I said, you have to catch the flight. But then he said, it would break my heart to leave Japan, Mao. Can you, can't you just call them that I won't fly to Frankfurt tomorrow? <laughs> so I said, no, I can't call them because if I call them, they think that I manipulate you. And uh, I, I make, I dial and you tell them yourself that you choose to stay in Japan a little longer, so. We did that, and then actually he just stayed. So we were actually, uh, he stayed in different hotels. So he stayed for, uh, from November till February 12th. He stayed in different hotels in Nara and in, in, in Kyoto. First he stayed in the Nara Hotel, where he had a beautiful room. But he was, uh, after a couple of weeks, when I, the, whenever I came, the people at the front desk, they looked a little bit more tired, a little bit more tired, and a little bit more desperate. But it was obvious, because in, in this Empire, it's one of the oldest hotels in Japan, it was so easy to find his room, because you could hear the, the screaming sound of a hairdryer going on and what had happened James felt cow cold in his bathroom and he kept the hair dryer dry going for 24 hours a day <laughs> then in the restaurant in the breakfast room he said he does not like uh, the square butter with the uh, grooves in it like if he chose to eat uh, breakfast in the Nara hotel the butter has to be in perfect spheres so the staff had to come a little earlier to make the butter into perfect spheres. Then he had, because his skin got infec infected or from his disease, he needed to put into his bath water, how do you call it, kalium permanganate. It's something you use for disinfection, but you put just three crystals into water and it turns purple. So he used like a teaspoon of that in each bath every night. And then after a, a week's or a month's stay, the bathtub was 
black. So they had to change the bathtub. And anyhow, so, but at the end of his stay, which was very beautiful, or oh, one, one last a anecdote, he, that this was one of his most, as it, you heard the, saw the writing, one grain rice Buddha. So he spent a lot of time in his hotel room ordering a small bowl of rice and sitting there and practicing with his fingers to make the perfect spheres of one rice grain, rice grain. And he had the hope to convince the administrator of the Daibutsu in Nara, which is the biggest Buddha in Japan, to allow him to place the most beautiful of the small rice Buddhas, this perfect, perfect, perfect one, to place that in the hands or on, on the big Buddha. So that's the story of the one grain rice Buddha, which is actually a performance he did then also. But then a cleaning later, even though they were not allowed to enter his room, he blocked them with two wooden bamboo sticks. They had swept off his table and had thrown all the Buddhas in the toilet. He said, you have to help me. This is a disaster. The 10 best Buddhas are in the toilet. Can you get them out, please? <laughs> I haven't flushed yet. <laughs> so I said, this is the, well, I kneel down. I tried to get some rubber gloves, but with rubber gloves, you don't have the sensitiv sensitivity in your fingers to pick up uh, one grain rice Buddhas from the bottom of a toilet. So I fished them all out. I think I got nine out of 10. He was extremely pleased. So that was the fire test of working with James Lee. So, and then at the end of his stay, this is the, um, let me see if I have this. Yeah, this is the last, the last part, yeah. Um, we can continue with this video. So he made a performance in homage to Lindley Hubble. Lindley Hubble it's was great. a professor of English it's literature great. at Doshisha University in, in uh, Kyoto and influenced or introduced him or inspired James Lee Lodge. He died in 95. So this is a performance in homage to Lindley Hubble. So I'm there again in my ninja suit. I asked you to say, I have this textual from Netflix in Nara. Where you have this great. And this he shows the perfect round one grain rice Buddha to the guests. You can see between my fingers, this tiny sphere. This Buddha. There it is. This amazing small Buddha. They have only one rice grain. I would like. To set this Buddha on the great Daibutsu, if it's possible, for people to see the great Daibutsu and the little Buddha of only one rice, rice grain. And with a hard sutra, the Buddha has a big place here that this little sphere, the perfect sphere, would sit. Do you think there's any chance? And this is the performance five points make a man. So five of these boards with a little dot in the middle are given to five people in the audience and the way it's spread out it's similar to the position in the exhibition with the for example the red cords that there are five piles of red cords just relax we come to the so now it's standing there for a couple of minutes and then five points of good Art, star, man, any sound, any If you think that. 
do hamare gaya in se sab kar gaya ek minute chalta hai Yeah. So, and then very soon after that, Bias really left. February 10th, 1997. I arrived late at night. Can we, let me do the next one. So I don't remember. Whoop. Yeah, that's the photos of that. Yeah. February 10th, 1997. I arrive, arrived late at night with Masahiro Aoki, the director of the Toyota Museum in the Miyakoto Hotel, Kyoto. Again, we were stuck in a snow blizzard on the highway and could not arrive in time to spend the evening with James. As we came, he was already resting and did not want to see us. Aoki and I had a meal in our room near the room 536 of James Lee in the old part of the hotel. Not renovated, the wooden furniture are worn, the TV is tiny and old, the window frames shaky and the view over Kyoto marvelous. After our meal, I went to buy James' room to check whether I could help him packing. He was tied and there was no sign of packing to return to Europe again. On the table, there were numerous objects, one, grace, one grain rice Buddhas, the three monkeys of ivory, a, peer, a pile of deer furs, which he had bought in Nara, golden swords, the red hat with the golden scarf on the sofa, after a short conversation, he let me go to bed, knowing that we would get up early, around 5 a.m. After four hours sleep, I went to James' room, while Aoki-san continued to sleep. Actually, James did not want him to come. I entered with a second card key, which James had given to me. He was in the bathtub. I sat down in the room. Dawn. A light, came, light cover of snow, snow had turned the view of the small roofs of Kyoto and the row of mountains white and taking away all color. I've been waiting for you yesterday with a great bottle of champagne. Ask whether they would take it off back and off my bill. Let's have a look at these furs. He bought like dozens of furs in Nara because Nara has sacred deers in the park and they sell the little furs of deer. And he bought not one, not two, but he bought dozens. Fold the edges under so they make squares. Do you think you could find someone to sew them together? We tried various ways of arranging the little furs, varying immensely in size and thickness. Actually, we had to go to the airport or to give brought to bring him to the train station to go. But, but I want them lined with black silk and a pouch for the person wearing it to stick in their head. I wonder whether we should make a circle or a square. Try it another way. Put the small ones on the top. In one way, I enjoyed doing this work with James. On the other hand, I, he was supposed to be on an 8.40 flight from Itami to Narita in order to catch a connection to Frankfurt and to Cairo after one night stay near the airport. However, we had not thought ever about packing. On the floor were several one-grain rice Buddhas and little beads. On the table, a newspaper clipping of a a girl in a long black dress and and so on. He was in awe with the young designers of Japan. So Aoki-san came around 8.30 and we began to talk about the perfect circle with the point in the middle. Then the champagne, which we had missed the night before, came to James' mind. Would you like to have a glass of nice champagne now? Call the room service to change this bottle for a nice cool one. So, so we had fresh, cool champagne before breakfast. As usual, James would find it very vulgar if I filled the glasses more than a quarter. Don't drink so fast. You gulp this down as if it were water. Enjoy. To your health, Aoki-san, please tell me, why is Japan so beautiful? 
quickly, hayaku. <laughs> uh, so, so we finished the champagne and continued packing. James had bought several tea accessories from the gift shop in the lobby of the hotel. His bags and packages were lined up in front of the room. As we were completing our packing work, there were several bulky and fragile objects like sculpture, like a sculpture of a black woven bamboo, similar a dream catcher and thin pieces of bamboo which James had tried together, tied together in Nara to use in our presentation in the chrysanthemum room in the Nara Hotel in homage to Lindley Hubble. So, okay, yeah. On our way down, I had called Toyama-san, the founder of the foundation in, in, in Tokyo, to let him know that James had already missed the last possible train, which br would bring him in time to Tokyo to make the plane. Aoki-san, a couple of days ago, I ordered, he said to Aoki-san, a couple of days ago, I ordered some books in the gift shop. If they arrive, be so kind to buy them for me. And also we have to buy a present for Christian Boltanski, which Stefan can bring to Seoul, because I was about to go to Seoul to meet Boltanski at an exhibition. In the shop, the ladies were greeting James Lee with delight. The books had arrived, and Aoki-san paid for them, and a pair of silk-covered shells with little cats painted on them for Christ, painted on them for Christian. This cute stuff is perfect for Christian Boltanski. And now, Aoki and Stefan, you will sign these books for me, right? But then you have to put stars on the letters. These stars serve to balance out the imperfections of typography. Wherever you feel there is a hole or you place a star. While we were writing, I got more and more impatient. I think it's good enough. No, you asshole, you cannot hurry, hurry. If you want to make something beautiful, take your time and make it perfect. I added the stars, which were already, were really needed to make the page look balanced. As we had finished the signing, James took the books. Now it was about 1 p.m. Actually, I feel a little hungry. And I think to stay, I, I think I should stay strong for the journey. We should eat a little before taking the train. We went to the terrace restaurant. Before Weeks before, we had talked the waiter into giving his Miyako hotel company pin to James for 1,500 yen. He wanted it, he nagged, he didn't stop until the poor waiter sold his pin. Now we used a napkin, that's the napkin, to make a plan for the exhibition in Kawagoe, that's the place where the foundation was that invited him months ago and that had hoped. Yeah, okay. So we we started to draw in the bill uh, on the on the napkin, and the waiter was ex upset and gave us a paid made us pay another two thousand yen for the for the napkin. So. Then finally, finally, so this, you see, these are the pictures of James Lee's room before leaving. Then you saw us drawing on the napkin, and actually later the exhibition was realized following this napkin. And now that is the last time I saw James. So left Kyoto February 12th. And so I just put him on the train. I didn't go with him on the train. Aoki went with him. So that is the last time I saw James and he left. So.